Okay. So good evening, everybody. So um, today we're going to do a review of another Puppeteer player's gameplay that he posted in uh, Evil Dead the Game Discord. Uh, I want to show up here that I got his express permission to review this uh, this gameplay video. He also sent me a link to his build, uh, as we can see here in the background. Um, the purpose of today's video is not to put, not rate it down in any way, shape, or form. It's to um, potentially help him and help any other puppeteer players that are that have a similar type of play style um, to potentially improve their game. He does win this game, um, and that does seem to be a contention in um, maybe even modern thought or something of that nature. Where, and I've heard multiple streamers say this: "I don't want to win; I want to lose, so that way I can learn from my losses." You can still learn from a win in order to learn how to play better. Sometimes it's very difficult to do on your own. I've heard this from other people in the community as well. I've done X, Y, and Z. I'm level such and such. Um, as we can see, he's level 112 here in the background. Um, and this is not something that not rated said. I mean, obviously he didn't say, I'm this level, I've got X amount of hours, you can't teach me anything new, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm level 50. I have a lot, still a lot to, to learn about this game, but the things that I have learned about Puppeteer does seem to be slightly different from what other folks have learned about Puppeteer. But there are people that, you know, I'm level 100 plus, I've got 200 hours in the game, I X, Y, and Z, and that's their answer, as if that is some sort of a defeat to any type of advice that you were trying to give. So... At any rate, um, again, we want to we want to watch this video. This is I'm playing it straight from his YouTube channel. Um, he has given me the express permission to do this, um, and at any rate, we would like to you know a little bit of fair use uh, because we are going to be nice. analyzing this. So pause straight off the bat. Uh, we can see here that he's already threat level six down the lower right hand corner. He's already unlocked basics and elites, and we're up against an Amanda, a Cheryl, a Sash, oh no, Wash. Reverse those down on the left hand corner. It's a wash, then a sash, but that's just the way that I said it. Okay. That's actually um, some look for us, though. You can see here we're at the demonic treehouse. Oh, uh, do I want to trap anywhere else? Is there any more traps in place? He's searching for traps to the entire place. place down. Looks like we've got a they, big, large like amount of traps. Everything there. looks to be trapped up. A couple mobs standing around, which is great for us as puppeteer. We want to be mindful of the mobs that are standing around so that way we don't have to waste trap energy there. on a portal. A necro or a warlord may feel okay with that. As a puppeteer, due to our economy, okay, they are on their way. we don't want to do that every single time. Now right here, he said they're on their way, and if we look up in the left-hand corner, this Cheryl is pretty much here by herself. Um, we've got the tree that's not trapped right next to us here, but we've got a unit right in front of us that we could go ahead and power possess and get a few hits into her regardless of whether or not we're face tanking or we're dodging or any other type of situation, this is an opportunity for us to get some damage into the survivor. It's going to increase your threat level, any amount of damage that you do to them. It's going to increase your threat level, increase your experience. It's going to bring down some of their health. It's going to um, increase the fear in that survivor. Maybe we could go ahead and get a possession on that person. Um, it's going to potentially run them out of resources. Um, I don't want to say that at every single opportunity that you can possess a survivor, but specifically right now, one-on-one -on -one at the very beginning of the game with power possession up, we should probably go ahead and power possess this unit and put some damage into this Cheryl. Um, we do go ahead and possess. And I want you to take, let's see, I'm not 100% sure if we can see very well down at the bottom, especially with this flashlight. How do we know that this is not power possess? And this is a little bit of a problem with Puppeteer, um, even that I hear out of the Puppeteer channel on Discord is, um, when do I power possess? How do I know how to power possess? This is a perfect example of when to power possess. One-on-one, -on -one, no one else is around. We get the extra damage, we get the extra health. We also get the bleed damage. We need to go ahead and do that. I can tell you that it's not a power possess if we look at the energy down at the bottom going from down very quickly, 193, 192, 190, we're down into the, excuse me, down into the 180s, 170s, his energy is draining very fast, excuse me. <coughs> um, on a power possess, 
quick drink of water. On a power possess, you're you're using like one energy, one infernal energy per second. On a normal possession, you're using approximately four energy per second, and that's how I can tell. He does have invigorating possession because you can see it moving up um, two to three, and I think even on if you took a look at his um, talents in the background, which we're not going to expand on those very very much. I mean, he's he's a basic elite hybrid type type build, which I, I'm not knocking in any way, shape, or form. Um, but the invigorating possession, even at the max three infernal energy per hit, at approximately four per second, even if you're hitting every single second, you are one infernal energy behind on per second on that possession. So um, it's a it's another reason to be mindful of what type of possession that you're doing and to always use power possess. So that way you can attempt to come out of the possession ahead, because on a power possess, like I said, it's one. Ener uh, infernal energy per second. So if I'm gaining three per hit, if I can if I can gain three energy every three seconds, my power possession is negated. The 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 en fell, uh, uh, infernal energy upkeep cost is negated. Um, if I can do more damage than w one hit every three seconds, I'm going to end up with more energy in that calculation. Um, if you kind of wind back and you can even see right there, pay attention to the light attack button. Um, we'll even, we'll roll it back five seconds and we'll do 10 seconds. So, um, see what spam, spam, I'm stunned. What am I going to do when I come out of this? I'm going to spam light attack some more, spam light attack some more, spam light attack some more. He even says support ash is here. Okay. So now we've got the second person coming up. If we take a look up in the mini-map, it looks like the other two are very closely in tow as well. Um, perhaps I should have had this ready already. Bear with me one second. Let me break out my puppeteer unit combos. We'll bring this over. Um, Dismiss, I don't care about that. So here are the basic combos. This is the longest string that we have available to us. Um, this one here I put down seems to be a good medium because this is quite a few hits and you can stop at any point in this and not, and what we're trying to do is avoid that dance, that um, pump in the chest dance or the leaning forward and yelling um, animation. Every single unit has a combo break animation, including survivors, I'm sorry, a combo break. Not necessarily an animation. The puppeteer has the animation. They do seem to be approximately the same. But puppeteer does also seem to... More interesting, let's see. Um, somewhere I note on here that uh, you cannot chain them together. Okay. Um, no. Okay, I think it's right here. Uh, these also seem to break oddly. There it is, right there. Uh, okay, uh, you follow them up from each other. For instance, the last combo I posted... To go back into his light, 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 heavy breaks there. So if we, we did like a light, 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 heavy, 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 once he does like the scream or whatever, you go into a light, 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 heavy, and it will do another animation there. We're going to see this even in not rated's video. So it's it's really important for the puppeteer that you learn these combos and you can in that you even potentially break your combo early to not do a follow up partial combo. Um, you can long form full and then also follow up the long form with another long form. So this here, you can double, uh, double over, but it's so long, it's not very practical. Um, I also attempt to avoid light hits whenever possible, um, which is why I do say that this one seems to be nice because we've got heavy, heavy, light, and then heavy, and then potentially another heavy, and then you break into a dodge. Uh, and, and avoid and kind of let your combo timer, let's say, reset uh, before moving into another one. Um, this one seems to be an okay one as well. Again, we're trying to mostly avoid the lights as much as possible. It's not that I don't like them. It's just that the, the way that the damage is based, uh, heavy is, is, is twice that of a light. And since puppeteer heavies are two swings, they've, it, 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 it's actually 
if you times that by two, that's the total damage of a heavy for a puppeteer. But then a light means that the light hit is a quarter of the damage of the total damage of a heavy accounting for both hits. So it is a pretty heavy hit to the damage potential that you can make in a, uh, on a puppeteer basic if you just use heavies. I hope that makes sense. Um, so again, another reason to learn these and do not spam the light attack button, not only because it's subpar total damage, but because it's light, 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 four lights, combo break. And then I've, I think I've even seen him on this one more light does a combo, does a, a break animation one or two more. Um, it, it kind of seems to a, a little bit of a variation of it, but we'll see that a couple times. Here, where she places out that, we're back to just spamming, and and now we're taken out with the with the sash support in tow. Um, if we go back there, at no point was there even any kind of attempt to dodge any of the attacks or move into a better position, make one of their attacks waste. Um, but again, remember they have a, 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 a combo break as well four lights, four heavies, and then there is a pause before you can take any other action. You might be able to dodge, but you can't move and you can't swing again for sure in terms of WAS and D move. So you may want to try and lure them into that type of a situation and capitalize on that with a heavy to get two free hits in in their combination break. Okay. So as we mentioned, though, um, he was up at like 200 something. He came out of this at 160 from that regular possession, and we can also tell here um, power possession is on cooldown. I'm gonna go for a dash. There, damn. Yeah, and that sucks. He didn't catch anybody. Now this right here, I would suggest always, and he does this very shortly in the video. Trap, let it go um, for for a tree trap. Trap it, let it swing, then possess it, then swing it manually. Um, if you, if you go into it and swing it manually, it goes under cooldown. You can still set the trap, even though it's grayed up. You'll notice that it doesn't have a line through it. Um, someone else showed me that not too long ago. Um, so you can still set it. However, the melee cooldown that the tree gets, I want to say it's 15 seconds, that's what's applying to the trap, um, even though you can set it again. So here he possesses it. I think he does get the hit there on the sash. Although, again, I do kind of agree with a little bit of his, of his, probably what I'm going to assume what was going through his mind is if he set that, the sash wasn't going to set that trap off. So he just went ahead and went into it and he could have got the melee swipe and then almost guaranteed that hit, which he did. So I kind of, there, there, there is that to also take into account. Him with that. Okay, we've got a lot of things. We can power possess this unit and we can come up here. She's, um, she's giving them what for. We can power possess this unit oh. here. And I think that's what he meant yeah, to do. Awkward. Yep. But he just went into um, Cheryl here. Uh, he is going ahead and trying to get some. That was, I didn't mean to possess her. I meant to possess the unit. Yeah. Now, now is when we need to we need to go ahead and gather up some energy as quickly as we can, and and mostly right now at this point we want to just be above that 40 energy requirement to possess another basic unit. We could even grab a hold of this. Is that a sash up there? Who's got the knife? We've seen him with the knife. The knife is really good at just. I need more energy. Yep, it's just keeping them pinned down and um, and just putting some damage onto them, getting us some, some threat levels. Here is what I was talking about, where he traps it. It swings, he possesses it, manually swings again. That's the ultimate efficient use of the tree. Do that, we're level eight. Going to the dagger, which is not great. I agree. We do want to be level 10 before we move on to objectives. They're into the yeah, car. Uh, nope. Yeah, not a great. Let's uh, can we roll back? Yeah, I mean that yeah, was almost that. a full bar of energy. Nope. Damn. Oh, they really need a buff car possession then, because all it is just takes that, and the car is car's not I'm not possessing the car anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's what's your other option though? Um, your hope also is that that really what you're trying to do is break the car. The only problem is is that it takes about two full energy bars in order to get them to break the car. 
Uh, another option is to possess one of your units and try and get them to run into you while you're possessing that unit. Um, two good smacks with a car into a possessed unit will break that car. I might be able to do some of the dagger, but I don't know. Uh, I have left his voice on as I'm talking through this. Like I said, we're giving him... I think this is like the second or third time that I've watched this video, too, so... Okay, they are a little bit slow at this. This is... I would just be up ahead well, of them as best as I can, just, throwing yeah, down traps. Um, this is daggers the down inside way, the tunnel. Um, they are going the wrong way a bit. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. They're not really paying attention. Here's another opportunity to just go ahead and power oh, possess okay. this, especially now that the car well, is flipped over. But we open up the gate, we open up the portal, rather, and spawn out a couple more basics. Not too bad, because if you possess that one, then obviously that's going to give them the direct target to shoot for, um, so to speak, and definitely, literally. <laughs> but um, I think I would have went with uh, keeping, the, keeping the extra energy, uh, just in case if I uh, go into a power possess and, and, uh, and get killed immediately as well. Um, so you got a couple AI and they're all running away. Here we are. Now I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is a power possessed. Take a look at his infernal energy. It's going down very slowly. And I take that back. He does not have invigorating possession because his energy is not going back up. But you can see it's 113, 112, 111, 110. It's very slow under a power possession. And again, the melee spam of light attacks. And let's go back to... Yeah, right about here is fine. We've got one, two, three, four. Okay, that, that technically is what counted as a fourth I get, and a dance. One, two, and then a dance. You see what I'm saying? One, two, and then a dance. One, two, and then a dance. One, two, and then a dance. So it is extremely, extremely inefficient to just button mash on the puppeteer, and it is extremely inefficient to use light attacks, even though he got the down. He would have been much better served to use heavy attacks. Actually, I probably do this. I think he does get one here. Got her. Of course, potentially we should have secured the down a little bit better. That also could have been done with a power possess or just keeping possession. He dropped the possession of the power possess. Um, that's one other thing that I wanted to, to point out there real quick. Don't drop your power possession. Stay in it. Stay in it for the maximum amount of time that you can. Get the most value out of it because your power possession, it's already up over here in the lower left-hand corner. He can power possess again. Um, it runs while you're in a power possession. So... Um, you want to stay inside that power possess unit as long as possible, or at least until your power possess is back up off a of cooldown, which um, I want to say it's 90 or 95 seconds or something of that nature. Non-talented and about 60 seconds talented. The 60 seconds, I, it goes by very quickly. So you can go from power possession to power possession relatively quickly. Um, I mean, I would say that probably that fight with Amanda was approximately 20 to 30 seconds in and of itself. I you know, would rewind, but I don't think we really necessarily need to. You can go back and double check it for yourself. Um, but again, it goes by very quickly. Um, so we should have stayed in that power possession. We could have dropped down a portal after the power possession um, if we got killed outside of that to get them off of the, off of the body a little bit better. And then... Um, went into another regular possession or power possession after the portal um, to, again, keep them off of the body that much harder. We're going back after the Amanda. Notice we got light, 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 light. We're just spamming the light button. There's a combo break dance. Two, three. Is anybody nearby? I think they're all below. This is a power possession. You can see the thing coming off of it. You can see he's down to 45 seconds. That took about 15 seconds total to bring her down. From the power possession again it goes by very quickly he's got a portal uh, proximity portal on her i don't think they're gonna go for amanda which is actually good um we're looking for our way down inside the tunnel we found it and oh, sash yep is going for the save however i don't know 100 percent if i agree with going for the sash even though he's by himself 
I, in this situation, I would let him go to her. She's probably going to go ahead and bleed out and be dead, and I'm going to get the threat levels for that. He's now broken away from his other two people that he needs to help support, and their dagger timer is running. Not only that, but as we know, Puppeteer has some of, not, not the greatest economy because of how Infernal Energy uh, in-game perks, we don't get the plus Infernal Energy per second until the very last tier, and that's only 1.5 per second. So right now at 172 energy, 120 of that is going to be taken up with a portal, although there is one portal on her body, a proximity one, and 20 seconds left in our um, power possession cooldown. I think it would probably be smarter just to go over and drop, um, get some infernal energy from the blue circle, drop a basic portal, which it looks like our secondary basic portal is going to come off cooldown in about the next 30 seconds or so. Um, basic, elite, boss, get some damage on Cheryl and Wash. Um, Wash is actually fairly weak, no shields, missing approximately a third of his health. I think I would have shifted my focus that way. One of the other one of the other things that we could also do right now is just go ahead and drop this boss right now on the sash. What is it? Not not what is not rated doing, but what is the sash doing? Thinking that he's gonna go and get this scot free. I think he heard um, not rated in demon form here in spirit form and decided to turn around and go back away. So now it's it's exactly this, the exact same thought as I just mentioned. Now our portal basic is back up of, uh, of a cooldown, so we've got two of those to drop. We've got an elite to portal to drop, and we've got our boss to drop. Total. This a little bit. Um, so there we do both basic portals. We do the elite portal, and then he goes into a fear. I don't know if I agree with his fear because we're already back up to 198 infernal energy. I'm not really sure if we're really trying to fear someone in particular. Cheryl's going to be the only one that we could potentially possess. Um, but what are we going to do with a Cheryl that we can't do right now with our boss? And what infernal energy do we need right now that we don't already have? I think at 198, we're fine to just go ahead and summon up the boss. Uh, we're going to miss that. And then we're going to go into an elite possession. I don't necessarily think that the elite possession is the worst thing in the world, but I don't personally too much care for jumping into the elite. Um, we can also take a look at the infernal energy again and notice that it is not a power possession because the infernal energy is ticking down way too fast. I think the elite possession is a little bit stronger or a little bit different, but you can see that it's going 126, 125, 44, 23, 22, 21, 3 to 4 energy per second. So we know that that's not a power possession, and power possession is not on cooldown. Okay, we've got our next round of basic portal put out. We have three seconds left on our elite timer and 16 seconds left on our portal basic timer, and we still haven't unleashed a boss yet. Another reason why I like to say, you know, you do portal basic, portal basic, portal elite boss. You want to go almost exactly in that order because that's the most number of units that you have out on the field. The survivors may be able to F-chain at that point, and they may be one-shotting things, but everything that they're doing is keeping their attention off of your boss. This is the exact same mentality that you want to have for almost any other demon, not just Puppeteer. But we can bring out the boss. Uh, we can lay down the AoE stun. That's going to knock everybody even out of their finishers into, into a stun, and any AI unit that we have out on the field is now open to give them a hit. Um, the elite unit to do the big AoE thunderstruck right up behind that. Uh, potentially, if, if, if it lines up well enough. Um, again, just getting some damage out onto these survivors who are hurting very bad right now. Okay, I think this is a power possession. This is a power possession into the basic unit. Um, and you can see we're already doing the combo animation dance break. We're missing... No, that was a power possession. I apologize. Did I say regular? That was a power. Okay. Um, but we've got focus down, and now we're finally bringing out the boss behind. Let's see. We drop the basic, and we don't drop the elite. So, you again, you want to make sure that when you're dropping your units on the objective, that you are dropping them to create the most chaos possible. And not only that, but also be careful not to drop your units 
right here on top of the survivors. Um, this is going to give them the ability to just to, to just change their camera angle and tap melee one more time in order to maybe go into one more F chain or do a one shot. An ash, a wash. Mine has one point into melee damage in his talent tree, and at max pink F in game with a white chainsaw, he's pretty much one shotting everything, every single basic unit from necro to warlord to pup tier. Um, pretty much one-shotting the AI control units. If he's not one-shotting them, it's a one-hit into an F execute. So um, you don't want to put them right on top of them. You want to spawn them a little bit further away. This is doubly true with your elites. In this specific one here around this left-hand corner where the doorway is and that table on this wall that's right here um, on the side, I would put my elite portal right there because he's going to spawn in He's going to lock onto the closest survivor, and he may go ahead and drop his AOE Thunderstruck stun because it can go through walls. It doesn't. It, you don't have to have even clear line of sight. It just has to be within the given range. Um, this will make them almost like the Necroflutus need to try and go and find that AI unit. Now, after it does the Thunderstruck, it'll probably run out and try and smack somebody in melee. But I don't. I try to not drop portals straight on its onto survivors because of this subterfuge type with for for the basics i would have dropped them over here off to this side to kind of let them rush in or over here back behind the truck or something of that nature to let them kind of run into the situation rather than just be meleeed literally out of the gate so we got the boss up real quick we're doing an aoe and you can see here that we got almost more than 50 percent of the dagger done at this point if you if you recall there's probably 30, maybe 40 seconds worth of time that's gone by that we haven't summoned the boss. And as soon as we come out and drop the AOE stun, Wash is, is, is really in need of a heal. Okay, so we're melee, melee spamming the light hits. Not necessarily a bad thing. There goes the ability. Good. We knock him out of the, of the healing circle. We're getting hit. Oh, yeah, I got Cheryl there. Yep, I know. You didn't want to grab Cheryl. Sometimes that's the way that it goes. It looks like we're probably going to get the down on the ash, and we do. Now, one thing to really note here is that Elagos' Heavies does an AoE hit. So you don't necessarily want to just be spamming the lights on him either. They have a good knockback. They have a pretty good tracking. They're still fairly powerful in and of themselves. But right here where they're all standing together... And um, right here where they're all coming back together, right here where they're, I think that was where I paused it before, right here where they're both standing get together. And I know that they're going to come for this dead body over here. They're going to come try and pick him up because he's their damage. He's, he's the one protecting them for them to be able to heal him. So they're going to come over and pick him up. And sure enough, there he is coming over to pick him up. Well, he stopped. There, so we're just spamming and keeping our eye. Good. It's good to keep our eye on him. Got a stun out. Got a grab out on her. That sash is shooting us in the back of the head. We've almost got him here. Nope, you want to you want to get him because he's. Yep, you focused a little too hard onto that. I would have went over and done a heavy. Yep. Got her down. That, that um, rock throw there that he did too, when he, let's see, right there, right here, where he calls up this, you can see here, look, that was a headshot for 199. Um, so there's actually a hit animation on the pull up of the rocks that can hit the survivors as well. And I'm pretty sure that that's like an AOE of whatever rocks that he's pulling up. So um, I think he did hit the rock through there, but the dagger's going to complete, and he's pretty right, much out of health anyway. That, that was a lot. Amanda's back up. In my opinion, if you know that you're going to lose an objective like that, like if, you, if you're like, okay, no, there, there's no way this is going to run, don't guard, the, don't guard the downs. Don't guard the bleed outs. Let them pick up the bleed outs or let them stay bleeding out through the thing because, as you can see here, Amanda was resurrected with full health. Um, was it Cheryl that was down? She resurrected with like a quarter health. So that's pretty important. If I resurrect, you know, if I'm dead in spirit form, 
objective completes and I get resurrected and I have a full health bar, Cheryl's not going to want to use a shimp. Cheryl or, or either support, right? Um, any support's not going to want to use a shimp. Cheryl's not going to want to use her uh, ability if you've got a full health bar. Right now in this situation, Cheryl is thinking, holy Jesus, warrior's really hurt. I'm really hurt. Let's get an ability. Let's get a shimp's out. We have a maximal boss. Um, I really wish I would have noticed what that what he was pumping points into earlier, but we can see here that he's maxed out now. Possession, portal, basic, and boss. Um, he's putting a couple into into portal elite. Um, I think you're still really served to go ahead and put some into infernal energy, just so that way you can raise your ceiling before you start putting any more into portal elite, just because of how we don't use our portal elite. Um, possession is the very first priority for puppeteer, um, but but overall this is really good. Um, really good uh, spread of, of, of your in-game perks uh, up until this point here for level 20. Uh, put Alright. Okay, and so what are we doing here? Him, yep, you do want to keep messing with them. Always keep messing with them. That might be the smart place. Keep messing with them. Always. They do have a mana, but it doesn't look like she knows what she's doing. You don't it's want to let them go and collect items and heal up from this damage right now. Which is really um, good for us. It really sounds like... Um, no, there, okay, so 20, what did she use? Uh, boss, we got max portal. She's a shemp, so her ability there. Because you can see now her and Wash are healed back up. So we're not doing too bad. They used her active to heal. They have to my traps. Make a noise, man is terrified. Yep, just making our way back to him. Okay, so now we've got... Now we're at Amanda, who, for whatever reason, has gone from where we killed her from just outside of the, um, of that little tunnel going down into the side entrance of the frying pan tunnel. Um, she's now come up here into Misery Manor, um, looks like maybe a bit north of where she died from, and she's looting up. Why? Don't know, but she's on her own, so this is the perfect time to capitalize and bring her down. Matt is over here, by herself. And how are we going to do that? Well, we can drop a portal basic right here and go ahead and get into one. Do I want to capitalize on this? Yes, you do. Always want to capitalize. There. There, right there. Just underneath her on the first floor, just on top of the hill, you can see the white outline of the basic unit. Go and grab that one with your full energy. Power possessed, regular possessed, doesn't matter. Get it's in on her. Could. We do have everything trapped over here. Yep, we got everything trapped up, but we don't want to sit here and wait for her to figure out. We got This is time that's just burning. Let's She's looting. Now that basic unit is gone right there at the door. And now we go into the into the basic unit. This was this was a whole bunch of time wasted. Um, Could have went into the unit much earlier and gotten some damage on tour. But we go into it, and this is a power possession. You can see it ticking down very slowly on the infernal energy, and we've already gone into the dance break. And so let's count them up again. So we go into. We just Hello. spam the light one, two, three, and four, and roar. And one, and two, and roar. And one, and two, and roar. Yeah, We've got to have better oh, wow. better combos um, in our arsenal than hitting the light right. button. It works. It works for him. He brings this Amanda down, but he even says in this, I think this Amanda's pretty new. She doesn't really seem to know what she's doing. I kind of tend to agree with that because she didn't dodge one time. Um, I'm not trying to say that, again, that not rated is is new or bring him down in any way, shape, or fashion, but we have to have something better than just spamming the light attack button um, in our combo arsenal in order to put some damage onto him. Um, not only that, but the dodge button was never hit. Roll up there, okay. Roll back here. This is about the time, yep, when we take Hello. over. And we're just spamming. And look, now we're not taking a whole bunch of, of damage into our balance bar here. But at some point, we should be able to dodge in through this in order to not get the stun, which should have already happened, but she tries to run away right oh, wow. here and activates the trap. 
Now our balance bar actually should be reset. Uh, Can't really tell. There's another yell. And he drops the power possession immediately. Uh, again, I would not do this. I literally would take that unit and run to the north. It's kind of hard to tell on his map because his map rotates with him. Mine doesn't, so it confuses me to, to say, okay, he needs to run north, but on his, his north is pointing almost south. Um, but I would run that unit to either where they're at, where they're going to be coming out from, but it looks like they've taken the side entrance, but I would run at them with that unit and see if I could catch them because under power possession, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of energy at all. He came into that unit at 250 and he's only down to 239 after spending what I'm going to assume is about 20 to 30 seconds in that unit. I'll rush him and trap a body real quick. There we go. And he doesn't have invigorating possession. Like we said, he's not gaining any energy on these possessions. Got another point. So see, we could have ran this with the unit or just stayed in it. I think they're going to save her though. Possibly. They should be going to save her. And she died. Okay. Just kind of following them around. Um, yeah, go ahead and trap it, I guess, for the experience and or if they decided to jump out. We're doing we're not in a bad spot. I agree, you're not in a bad spot. He just reduced everybody's fear. Again, I don't, I don't really know if I agreed with that one, um, that that jump scare, because you, you were, we, we were pretty much at full infernal energy that only netted us what we spent on the box, pretty much because we picked up all of our infernal energy that we were missing from bringing down Amanda. We trapped the box. That's thirty-five energy, and so that fear that should give us, I think, a hundred per person hit only gave us 30 and it did fear sash but not to the point where we're going to take him over and i don't really know if i would even care to take over the sash at this point in time um what we should be doing right now is dropping okay now okay with this now we got our units i was going to say dropping a uh, portal basic for um trying to find one to take over uh we we haven't dodged any of the shovel hits we just spam the light attack button. It's gotten us nothing in terms of knocking them out of their animation, which the heavy also does seem to do quite effectively, is to hit them out of their attack animation and stop you from being hit. Ah, the shovel. We are under power possession. You can also tell because of the red sort of energy coming out of the possessed unit. She's going to get her heal down. We're still just smacking away on the light attack. Spam, spam, spam. It's working. It's Sash getting her down. Up. Sash uses the shimps, which is good. Boom, we lose that. And we came out of that, the, all of that time that we were fighting, we, we used almost half of our time up in the power position. Uh, approximately 25 seconds in that power position. 35 more seconds left to go before we get it back. And now all, well, two of the survivors are ready for possession through some of those final hits that we threw in. He's gonna get feared and get a hand on his face, so now he's ready for possession, and then, boom, he takes over uh, Wash here. And let's, oh, nope, he's in the iframe still from the hand. She's in her iframes from, yep. I'm doing an F execute, and here we go, gonna get a little bit of damage onto the sash. But that knife, man, that knife is just an anti-possession weapon, so don't fault not rate it at all for getting knocked out of that fairly quickly by the sash. I think Aunt Cheryl has her soul. Cheryl does have the soul. He's not wrong. And we're back up here next. Okay. Gonna power or gonna possess her. She's got 43 bullets. I don't know if it's really necessary to to uh, to to fire the weapon and try and waste the ammo. However, that fear trap right there that she is now next to is what I would park her next to drop the possession and I should have enough energy for power possession for the unit that's going to jump out of the portal. We just nice drop her place. here. It felt real. Let's get a little bit more energy. Yep. We do want a little bit more. She's probably going to get it now. Boom. Okay, but we did bring out the boss. Now, the last thing, so I don't think that she has any ammo, but which which was 
you know, it, um, expected because on a resurrection, you, all you have is just your weapons that you um, that you died with. You don't get any of your ammo, none of your shamps, none of that. It all drops on your body when you die. However, be very mindful when you're playing Elgos to not just be spamming your attack button because right there she was aiming it at his head and it was only because of the resurrection and maybe he knew that. But just to kind of throw it out there that you don't want to leave your head exposed in front of a hunter for too long on Elgos. Or an Annie. Good AoE. Cheryl uses an amulet. We gotta bust through that. And there we go. Grab her out of the Shemp's animation. Very good use of the grab there. And getting a little bit of damage out onto this Amanda. She's foolishly just going for the resurrect instead of trying to drag Elegus away in any manner. Uh, again, see, we're just spamming it. Um, don't just spam the button. Pay very much attention to how many clicks that you're doing, what's around you. That. Yeah, he, so he says, ah, daggone it, I missed, or something of that nature. Uh, I think all three Elagos for sure, demons, their grab is highly affected by the terrain like that. You can see he didn't jump forward. There was no reason, real reason for him not to grab other than this change in elevation and terrain. Um, that seems to be one of the biggest problems with the grab that I've noticed he, uh, beyond it actually being uh, survivors being able to dodge it. But luckily, yep, we just need one more hit there. Um, our AOE stun is up. So very smartly, we're going to hold on to it. We can probably go ahead and, yep, pop it there. And we put her back down. Our grab is back up, so we can go ahead and do that. I highly recommend against warriors that you go ahead and do the grab. It's a free 200 damage, especially when they're the only one in front of you. Um, no one hitting you upside the back of the head, shooting you upside the back of the head. I think he is spamming it right now. Um... It's just some good guaranteed damage, and as soon as they let go of it, they're gonna try and hit you, and you can just phase invisibility away from them. No, uh, oh, no. yep, yeah, he did almost have it. Dag on. Very good, though. And But now, Wash is speared all the way up. Yep, and so you've got enough energy now. The damage that the survivor takes is based on um, how much energy, how long that the, uh, that the possession went. Um, I think it's... I think it's a bit more like of how much energy was used in the maintenance of the possession because when you get, um, I don't think it's a flat time thing. Um, because uh, I've seen it before where you go into somebody and it's, you know, a second or two and you've got a full energy bar and nothing happens because you get knocked out of it immediately. I've also seen where almost the exact same thing. You go into it, maybe you get a shot or so off, but you get hit out of it and the, the damage that they take is, is, is almost nothing. And again, I think it has to do with, with that. I don't necessarily agree with this, um, shooting the down survivor. But I think he was trying to secure the down. And boom, there you go. He won. He did win. That was close. Jesus Christ. So. That was super close. That was, I mean, I don't know. Oh, um, there. Nice. Okay. There, good. We started back over again. Um, meant to uh, meant, meant to pause it there. Um, anyways, um, so there we go. Um, hopefully, again, from the the review and let's say critique of this um, of this gameplay video, we've learned a little bit more about the puppeteer and how to play puppeteer. Um, again. This is absolutely nothing against not rated in any way, shape, or form. Um, please go watch his video. Go subscribe to his channel. Um, um, comment on his on his video and give him a good job for for winning his match. Um, the The main thing though that I wanted to to bring attention to here is um, is, is how to play puppeteer a bit more efficiently and how to pick up on some things in your own gameplay that you can work on in order to down survivors much more efficiently and overall be a better puppeteer player. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Swallow their souls, demons.